What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. Six Nations is just around the corner. Of course, I'm a little bit behind on some of the news that's been going on, but that's not always the worst thing because there have been updates to the news as they've been going along. I've been working very hard on a massive video, doing a big review of Rugby 22. It is up on the channel now. You guys can go watch that one after this one if you enjoy your rugby gaming information. It's the biggest video ever on the channel. I'm hoping a lot of people really enjoy it because it took an immense amount of work. But this video today Today, we're going to start looking at the teams that have been announced for the Six Nations and lastly picking my starting 15 of who would probably get into each team for me. So this one's going to be about Wales just because they're the home team for the opening game and we'll go through them sequential order over the next couple of days. So you guys make sure you are subscribed to keep up to date with all the latest videos and make sure you drop a comment on this video about the team because it's always fun to hear what you guys have to say. So the team announcement actually came out probably last week, a week and a half ago, but the have been some updates along the way a couple of news a couple of extra injury things so what we'll do is i'll put them on screen for you guys now so that you can see the team um i've made any adjustments that i'm fully aware of at the point of recording this so unfortunately Dewey lake has gone out with an injury now scott baldwin has taken over in that hooker position i've also added a bit of a, a color scheme to this one because i've had a couple of comments in the past where people have said you know, I'm not that versed with sort of rugby news or rugby player names. I sort of know a bit about watching the game. So I thought doing this way, it sort of shows the positions that each person's been named in. Because sometimes just a list of like 30 odd names can be a little bit too intense. So we'll have a quick run through them. So Loosehead Prop, Reese Carey, Win Jones and Gareth Thomas. I mean, there's a good set of props going in in there. No Nicky Smith. Uh, which did surprise me. Not that any, of the, not that you should get ahead of any of the people that have been mentioned. I just thought Nicky Smith's scrummaging has been improving. Uh, sort of over the last 12 months, 18 months, I think he's really been making big strides in his scrummaging. And it's one of the areas where Wales still can potentially struggle is just having those scrums collapse, not working for them. So I thought maybe we'd see him there. Not mentioned though, but still a strong set of props. Hooker position, Ken Owens taking over captaincy. He's been swapped around a little bit recently, hasn't it? Alan Wynn had captaincy. Dan Bigger had captaincy. Justin Tipperick had a couple of games. Ken Owens going to be taking the Six Nations, of course, now under Gatland. He likes his sort of uh, more capped, more experienced, old guard sort of people leading the team. I don't think Ken Owens is a bad person at all. I think that'll actually work quite well for them. I think sometimes talking to the refs, you want to be a bit more chilled out, a little bit more laid back. You want to open conversation rather than flailing your arms and stuff. Ken Owens is probably a good man to chat to the referee, get him to have a look more in depthly about some penalties that are going on and hopefully lead from the front. Um, Scott Bolden coming in over Dewey Lake. Uh, it's a real shame for Dewey Lake. <laughs> He's had such a good season last year. I was really looking forward to see him playing a bit more in this team as we get close towards that World Cup. And finishing out there is Bradley Roberts, um, so, you know, it's a good set of, of hookers going in there. No Ryan Elias, which I have to say, as a, as a Wales supporter myself, even though I do this channel, uh, I'm kind of glad to not see Ryan Elias there. The, the lineups from him have been so poor recently. I'm not sure if there was an injury or just performance hasn't got him in there. Um, I would have liked to have seen Dewey Lake in there, but we'll see how Scott Baldwin gets on. Tight head props. Leon Brown, Tom Francis, Dylan Lewis. Um, these are probably the three I think most people expected. Leon Brown, I still think, is dealing with a bit of a twinge in terms of an injury, but was named. It was one of the sort of bigger surprises people weren't ready for. I think Leon Brown's one of those lads who's never had the, the fullest opportunity to get involved. Plays games, trying to make the most of it, but a couple of issues go his way in the game and people sort of dismiss him. Hopefully he has a good Six Nations ahead of him. Lock department, one of the bigger areas to talk about. Of course, you have your standard boys. You've got your Adam Beard. You've got your Alan Wynn Jones. Um, no Will Rowlands. Um, I'm not sure if there was an injury, but I know there was a whole deal with him moving abroad and the 60 cap rule in Wales is sort of beginning to shred this team down. I know Gatlin's desperately trying to look at maybe having that 60 rule, you know, change because the... The amount of caps and people you lose just from them going abroad for for better wage <laughs> it's sort of ridiculous when it comes to that i get the reason of trying to keep people available for international maybe there needs to be a bigger rule looked at by world rugby to actually allow players playing abroad maybe international takes precedent as long as sort of wages are sort of financed and stuff by the internationals i'm not sure whether they need to and bigger to look at there uh but a couple of new names in here david jenkins now david jenkins is capped uh we didn't get to see a lot of him last year so hopefully we get to see a bit more time on the pitch not a lot of caps under his name two new caps also alongside them reese davis and teddy williams um some big units in there teddy williams i think plays for um cardiff blues but i can't say i know that much about him but he is a bit of a giant man so locked apartment for wales it's very much highly experienced or brand new to the international team um i imagine you'll probably be seeing adam beard and alan winch jones starting for the opening game 
Uh, but would be nice to see some of the new boys, but Ireland are a mega team in terms of the lineup, so you don't really want to be having uncapped players in there unless you've got something really up your sleeve to sort of throw at them. And then finally in that back row for the forwards, Falatau, Jack Morgan, Tommy Raphael, Justin Tipperick, Christ Schuenzer, and Aaron Wainwright gets in there as well. Now, I like Aaron Wainwright. Wasn't really picked that much under Pivak, and I never really knew why. Has the ability to be that sort of utility can move Flanker to number eight. He saw over at the Dragons what he was doing with Moriarty. They could swap but between uh, that number six shirt or the number eight shirt. No Moriarty mentioned. Uh, a lot of people were kind of annoyed by that. I, I don't think that's that's necessarily the worst thing. I'm glad Aaron Wainwright's got in just for that utility. He does possess Jack Morgan and Tommy Raphael showing off last year why they deserve to be in this team. Between them, still not a mega amount of caps um, combined, in fact. <laughs> but they still showed off. Jack Morgan especially. A couple of games saving Wales from uh, bigger humiliations than they've had previously. That game they lost against Georgia, you know, Jack Morgan was the only one who made that game anything, it feels like, for Wales. So I'm glad to see a couple of those boys in there. Um, they've got a good depth in that back row, to be fair. So nice to see a, a good spattering there of lower cap players with a great level of talent mixed in with some higher capped players just to, you know, really help enforce them a bit. In the scrum halves, then Kieran Hardy, Reese Webb, Thomas Williams, no Gareth Davis in there now. Reese Webb back in. Again, not one picked under Pivak a lot. Not one picked under Gatlin for a, a little while. He used to say a lot of things, you know, oh, we know what Reese Webb brings. We don't need to play him. We know what he's going to do. Didn't get picked. Uh, has been doing well at club level for a while, actually, Reese Webb. Reese Webb is one of those weird ones where I think more recently, any time I've ever seen him play for Wales, the games he plays for Wales have been quite unimpressive to me. But then he goes and plays a club level and he'll score three tries on the weekend. And it's it's such a shame to not see that step up applied to. Wales has seen that Wales kit a number of times in his past. He's a very experienced player. Um, easily probably going to be the most capped scrum half out of those three, I, I assume. I'm not sure who will get the starting pick out of the three of them. I think you'd probably be relying more on Thomas Williams, but I could see Gatlin maybe going for Reese Webb just to start off. Throw a bit of a spanner in the mix. Fly halves, Dan Bigger, Reese Patchell, and Owen Williams coming into the side. No Priestland. Um, again, he sort of made a, a revival from nowhere. Um, I, I'm sort of glad to see someone like Owen Williams coming in now. Generate that youth. There's a couple of different names still trying to get in there. Jared Evans not mentioned. You know, he's another one trying to get in that side. You're building towards a World Cup. You need depth. Sometimes just having, you know, the older boys with a bigger cap list isn't the way to go. More injury prone. Sometimes that, that shift in talent can just go away as you get older. I think bringing in some new boys is a good mention. Uh, Dan Biggers already mentioned a couple of things about, you know, not being captain. He's going to be absolutely fine with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with not being captain. Sometimes being captain can impact your own game and you just need to get on with your own game. So I don't think it's always the worst thing. And Reese Patrick, I think, always makes a nice little impact from the bench for me. Um, in that Wales team. No Gareth Anscom either. Bit of a shame. Again, a couple of names. A couple of names being thrown around there that could be in this side. So hopefully these three make the most of their opportunity. Centres then. Centres. Uh, quite an interesting area here. Mason Grady coming in uncapped. Now Mason Grady uh, won't be a name known by a lot of people. But he is a absolute unit of a man. Um, he doesn't really look like enormous. But he's a very, very tall guy. It reminds me a lot of when like you saw George North first entering the whale scene. He's a he's a tall lad, but he's he's quite lean. Uh, but the power he brings in the running. Now games I've seen him, he does tend to play outside center, but I can absolutely imagine Warren Gatlin wanting to play him like a Jamie Roberts. He's such a monster going forward. One thing that I'm I'm sort of hoping we get to see at some point over the Six Nations is Mason Grady and George North play alongside each other in center. I think that is an incredibly aggressive centre partnership that's just going forwards. Uh, you'd have to have a lot more possession on the ball. You'd have to be a much more attacking prowess in a game. Um, but I think if you can do that, just slamming one-off runners every time with these mega units... I think that's quite tough to deal with as a defence. So I hope we get to see that partnership at some point. Joe Hawkins getting himself in the side alongside of George North, as I already mentioned. Nick Tonkins, nice to see him still returning in that side again. You know, playing away from Wales, it's always like they're going to make sure they get in. Nick Tompkins in, it's nice to see. Kieran Williams coming in there, uncapped as well. Well, Kieran Williams is also one I know an enormous amount about, so uh, hopefully I'll get to see him a little bit over the Six Nations. And then finally in that back three then, Josh Adams, Alex Cuthbert, Rio Dyer, Lee Halfpenny, Reese Zamet, and Liam Williams now. Uh, now, there's a list of people who can have injuries. Uh, unfortunately, it's one of the things you experience in Wales. Liam Williams, uh, one of those sort of players, puts his body on the line, does come out with quite a few injuries. Lee Halfpenny, another one. 
just constantly in and out of injuries. I think Reese Zamitz currently actually got an injury. There's talk about him maybe just missing that first game entirely, but was named in the side. Rio Dyer, we got to see at the end of last year, get himself some tries, which is nice. Josh Adams still retaining in. Talks about him going over to France. How's that 60 cap rule going to affect him at the World Cup? Alex Cuthbert getting in the side. Um, Alex Cuthbert is still a tough one for me. Um, I, he's a good player. I just feel like his peak was was a few years back, when back under Warren Gatlin, back a few years now. Um, he's one of those people for me. I've always think of Alex Cuthbert as as that glass cannon at the minute. I think on attack, possession in hand, he's running forwards, he's making good meters with every run, he's breaking tackles, he's getting away. But doing so, you do find him a lot isolated by himself in attack. There's a number of penalties that go against him for jackling. Defensively, I don't think he's necessarily that sound. I think if you're going to have a player like Alex Cuthbert in, I might have leaned more towards like someone like Owen Lane. I think they bring quite a similar skill set, but I think, you know, sort of where they are currently in careers, I think Owen Lane's probably bigger on the attack side than Alex Cuthbert. Might be a, a big call there. You guys can feel free to disagree with me down in the comment section. So in terms of the starting 15 going up against Ireland, tough team. Wales are playing at home, but we all remember what Ireland did at home last year. Uh, I certainly do. Uh, that was a rough game to watch because that easily could have been a niller, which is something you do not want to be seeing in the Six Nations. So who would I be going with for my starting 15? I think in that front row, I'm going Win Jones, Ken Owens, and... I think I'm going with Thomas Francis. I think Dylan Lewis occasion can give away a few too many penalties. I think that would be my starting front row. Lock department, I think it makes sense to stick with Adam Beard and Alan Wynne jones uh, just for the experience factor against a team like Ireland at the line-out. But I would maybe be looking to take Alan Wynne jones off at half-time, throw in a new boy in the mix, you know, throw them off a little bit. I think it makes a smart move there. Uh, my back three, man, that's a tough one. I think I'd be going for... Jack Morgan, Tipperick, and Faletau. I would imagine they'll be wanting to keep some consistency with Gatlin. First game back in Wales. Play the players for the majority that were already under you. You know how to utilize them. So I think Tipperick and Faletau get a shout in there. Jack Morgan's been showing off so much. I would have him start over someone like Aaron Wainwright. I'd probably have Aaron Wainwright on the bench. Uh, can fill in that six or eight utility forward. You know, I think that's a useful thing to have coming on from the bench. Uh, scrum half department, man. What a tough one. I think I might actually go for Reese Webb. I actually think I would. Just again, I think the experience they've they've had before. I think my my partnership here would be Reese Webb and Dan Bigger. Um, and I think you'd have those two lads playing together again under Gatland. Experience factor, but also Reese Webb not wearing that whale shirt for a while might catch a couple of people off guard, especially at ruck time. Reese Webb is the sort of player now who likes just to sniping run, go himself. Occasionally can come across a bit selfish in the way he plays, but I think sometimes I can catch a defence like Ireland out who are organised, they're ready to do anything. They might not be ready for those quick little sniping runs. Reese Webb might get the nod ahead there. Dan Bigger, as I've already said. Centre partnership, what do you do here? I mean, the centre partnership for Ireland is uh, is a bit monstrous. Uh, I, think, I think Nick Tompkins for his defensive effort we saw last year. I think you've got to keep Nick Tompkins in there. And I think I would stick with George North. That's the partnership they've seen recently. It's been working relatively well for them. I always think that it should be the other way around i always do think nick tonkin should go to 13 and george north play at 12 but they they tend to swap them the other way around i think i would stick for that one i wouldn't play the mason grady george north partnership for this first game bit too raw against a team that's so big in the breakdown for jackling probably not worth the risk i think i'd stick with that and then finally in that back three man what a, what a tough way to go here um I think I'm chucking Liam Williams at fullback. I believe Rhys Zamet still actually has his injury. I'm not sure if he's going to be meeting this first game. Um, I might even throw out a Josh Adams and Rio Dyer and uh, try and mix it up a bit, try and catch people off guard. Lee Halfpenny can always switch back to wing again under Galland. He played right wing at one point, but I think I'd still be sticking with Josh Adams and Rio Dyer for me. Um... I think Rio Dyer is more comfortable playing just his left wing. I'm not sure about switching to the right wing. I might play Rio Dyer on that left wing. Josh Adams, fully versed in, in playing both wings and fullback and centre. If you need him to, they've been really messing about with him. So, um, yeah, I think I'd go Rio Dyer, left wing, Josh Adams, right wing. Um, and that way you've just got someone like Josh Adams who defensively 
can can be a little bit more solid. At least you've got him marking someone. Then maybe like a James Lowe or Mac Hansen, whoever gets put on that left wing, I think he'll be more successful there. But there we go, guys. That's going to be my starting 15. And a look at the Wales team. Of course, guys, make sure you do drop down in the comment section your thoughts on the team. Make sure you put down your own 15. It's fun to have a little bit to see what other people think. Of course, we will be doing the preview video next week on Thursday. I imagine when the teams actually get announced between Wales and Ireland for this first opening game of the Six Nations 2023 and make sure you are subscribed to keep up to date with all the latest videos as they come out. I hope you've all enjoyed this one today, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.